Hello, I'm Erin Johnson, and welcome to TMN Television on Thursday, December 6th for our last show of the semester. Tonight we look at the, some recent course change offerings. We also look at construction on and around campus and seeing what's behind and on schedule. Later we have the Truman Sports Update and stay tuned for the end of our show where we talk to Detours writer Anna Mercer about her recent trip to the Dancing Rabbit. These stories and more tonight on TMN Television. You don't want to miss this. In order to keep up with the student demand and new requirements from Truman State University, multiple departments across campus are changing course selection offerings. The Communication Department has seen a decline in the number of students who enroll as communication majors, says Department Chair Jay Self. He says since there are not enough students to fill every seat the department is offering, fewer elective options will be there next spring. The department is instead offering one or two more sections of public speaking because they serve the greater university. Another factor that will impact future course offerings is the upcoming Self and Society Seminar coming next school year. Our department chair, Aaron Fine, says it's another seminar that freshmen will have to take with the, with the Truman Symposium. Fine says he is considering removing the required new major seminar in his department in exchange for the Self and Society Seminar. The new cur curriculum is, has also made slight changes to what his department will offer in the future. The Truman State University Board of Governors met December 1st to elect new officers and listen to reports. At the meeting, the board unanimously elected Governor Laura A. Crandall as chair and Governor Jennifer Kopp-Dameron as vice chair. Governor K. Brooks Miller, Jr. was elected secretary. The new officers will begin serving at the board's first 2019 meeting. President Sue Thomas gave a report on the university's effort to secure state funding for two graduate certificate programs and updates to the university's new marketing plan. The board also passed a measure increasing on-campus living room rates by 1.5% for the 2019-2020 year. It also approved changes to on-campus dining, including transferability to Chick-fil-A, opening dining halls for Sunday evening meals, opening sea stores for fall and term breaks, and increasing meal values from $3.75 to $4. The new changes will go into effect next fall semester and will include an overall price increase of 2.8%. Though the university had planned to have the Greenwood Autism Center completed this fall, it is still in a legislative limbo. Truman has been working to convert the Greenwood building into an autism clinic for the past three years. The goal is to create a regional autism therapy and diagnosis center where students can have hands-on experience working with professionals to serve patients. Vice President for Administration, Finance, and Planning, Dave Rector, says in 2016, former Governor Jay Nixon made a commitment of $5.5 million to the project. A few months later, the project funding was cut, so the university only had enough money to create the design plans. Then Governor Eric Greitens withheld funding for the building again. Governor Mike Parsons has committed $550,000 to Greenwood, which has gone to replace the windows facing Normal and Halliburton Streets. Rector says Truman has submitted another request for $5.3 million for the project and expects to see whether the project will be funded in January when Parsons releases his budget recommendations. Pickler Memorial Library Special Collections will be closed from November 17th to January 11th as the final part of the stages for renovation. The $3 million project has been underway since shortly after the spring semester and has put in a new sprinkler system, fire alarms, and light fixtures. Associate Dean of Libraries for Special Collections and Museums, Amanda Langendorfer, says the office and its services will be closed throughout the construction. She says the renovations are necessary to keep the school up to building codes. During the summer, construction focused on the first floor because it's the busiest for students and has the most seating. Once fall began, construction moved up to the second floor and as the semester has progressed, has moved to the third floor. Junior Madison Scott says construction has led students to look for other places to study on campus since the third floor is closed. The Einstein Brothers Bagels renovation in the Student Union is ahead of schedule and construction is underway. Einstein's is planned to replace Jasmine's Brew and Bakery and Zyme in the Student Union building. Vice President for Administration, Finance and Planning Dave Rector says the budget is $337,000 and is a do not exceed budget. The decision to replace Jasmine's was based off the lack of efficiency at the site and the need for renovations. 
the contractors moved up the demolition dates to give themselves more time. Once Einstein's is opened, it will provide an option for breakfast in the sub and will accept meal swipes. After the break, stay tuned for the Truman Sports Update. But before all that, let's take a look at this week's forecast. It's fine that other people like you. It's more important that you like yourself. And I'm comfortable with every part of me. Meals on wheel coming to my door as someone who's housebound assures me that I'm not forgotten. They care that I'm okay. My name is Asha Ida Bell. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Truman State University's men's and women's cross-country team have finished their season at the NCAA Midwest Regional Meets last Sunday at Hillsdale College in Michigan. The women's team placed 13th out of 29, and the men's team placed th 23rd out of 32. Sophomore Jimma Sathoff has led the team the whole semester. She placed 41st out of 192 runners and cleared the course in 23 minutes. Sathoff said the end of the season tends to be challenging because of the temperature that drops rapidly during meets. Southoff says the team will be able, was still able to compete to the best of their ability. The Truman volleyball team ended their 2018 season with a winning 21-11 overall record and a 10-8 conference record. The team started the season with a win against Florida Southern College, but lost their last game against Lewis University. This is an improvement over last season as the team had a winning record of 17 out of 15 in 2017. The Bulldogs lost the last five of their regular season matches, but they still qualified for the GLVC 2018 tournament. The women's basketball whole team defeated William Jewell College last Saturday with an, a 60-59 to 59 final score. Truman went 3-5 to five from the free, free throw line in the final two minutes of the game. Two of the three successful free throws came from senior Rachel Edmondson, who also hit a shot behind the arc, making the team one point away from tying the game with two minutes left to spare. Sophomore center Katie Desikis posted a team high of 12 points and eight rebounds. As a team, Truman outscored William Jewell in bench points and second chance points. After falling to future GLBC member Lindenwood University, Truman has bounced back with two straight wins starting conference play. The team will face Lewis University Thursday, January 3rd. This has been your Truman Sports Update. Be sure to stay tuned after the break. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. To end our show today, we have Detours Magazine writer Anna Mercer here to talk about the Dancing Rabbit Eco Village and Intentional Living Community. Before talking to Anna, we're going to watch a small video piece she produced on the village. All right, thank you for sharing your video with us. We really appreciate it. So talk to us a little bit about the Dancing Rabbit and what, what it's like there. 
Yeah, so the Dancing Rabbit is a sustainable community about 45 minutes from Kirksville. Mm -hmm. And they basically try to live regular everyday lives, but not use any conventional power sources. So they mostly use solar energy, wind energy, and then they grow a lot of their own food. Right. So it seems like it's a very interconnected community. What's it like there with that atmosphere? It's a lot of different people. So they're really accepting of any kind of person that you are. Um, they have people ranging from firefighters to midwives to even a guy who just sells rocks. So it's really a fun community and they're excited to introduce new people to their way of life. That's amazing. Who was one of your favorite people to meet out there? Um, my tour guide, Thomas, was a really fun person. He is actually a firefighter for the wildfire season in California. But um, in day-to-day -day life, he just likes to show his friends and his kids how to live better lives. That's amazing. So tell me about the atmosphere there, uh, just the environment in general, what's it like? It's very interesting. They try to repurpose everything that they can. So you'll see a lot of reused items used for things that you typically wouldn't see. Like they have an apartment that's made out of this old grain silo that's really cool. So they just try to be as cognizant as they can about what they're using. That's amazing. So tell me about, a bit about the buildings that are there. They have some really interesting buildings. They have several community buildings. They have a dance studio and then they have like a building where they do their post office sorting and then laundry and then they also have a little inn and restaurant that they run mm -hmm. but then individually there's houses ranging from tents to renovated school buses and kind of everything in between so what was maybe the most interesting house that you saw there um, most interesting house probably either the grain silo that i mentioned earlier or there was this really cool almost like a tree house i guess you could describe it which <laughs> i thought was really neat so tell me a bit about your own personal experience with the village, what it was like to go out there and things. Um, they were really excited to have me out there. They loved explaining the way that they do things because they want to help anyone, even if you're not looking into moving into an eco-village, they want to help you minimize your impact and your um, footprint on the earth. That's amazing. So if someone was looking for information on where to find this village or just about the community in general, where would they go? Um, Dancing Rabbit has a really great website. They have videos and they run a blog, all of which can be accessed at their website. So that would be a great place for information. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. <laughs> to learn more and read Anna's story, head on over to tmn.truman.edu slash detours and check it out. Thank you for tuning in with us tonight as well. For complete news coverage, be sure to stay tuned to KTRM, pick up a copy of the Index, and look at Detours Magazine's latest adventure online. Don't forget to also check out our news content on tmn.truman.edu. You can also follow TMN on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for breaking news updates. And if you missed part of our broadcast tonight, check out TMN TV on YouTube. If you've ever thought about being on TV, be sure to head on over to tmn.truman.edu slash apply to fill out an application today. From all of us here at TMN, thank you for tuning in, and have a great winter break.